Okay, so you have w as a function of x, y, and z, and x and y and z being functions of t. And the question is, what is the derivative of w with respect to s at s and t being 1, 0? Okay, now one approach would be to just plug all this into w. So w would be this times this over this. And you will immediately see that it's a very ugly formula and finding that would be very time consuming. Another approach would be to use the chain rule, multivariable chain rule. See, w depends on x, y, and z. And x, y, and z all depend on two variables, s and t. So x depends on s and t, y depends on s and t, and z also depends on s and t. Okay, so in, in this case, what is the chain rule? Well, uh, if you wanted to know how change of s is going to influence w, because after all, this quantity is really asking for how does w change when you change s, okay? That's basically the question, right? So what you need to do is you want to ask how does s influence w? Well, s influ changing s influences w in three different paths. So there's the first path where change in s will affect x. x it's going to change x, and change of x will change w. How do you measure this? Well, uh, to measure how s changes w going through x, you first measure how w would change when you change x, and then multiply that by how much x will change when you change s. But that's not all. Change of s will also bring change to w going through this path, right? Going through y. And that one is measured by first figuring out how much w changes when you change y, and then figuring out how s change how y would change when you change s. And then thirdly, there's this path, which is measured by multiplying how much w changes when you change z times uh, how much z changes when you change s. And the miraculous thing about the multivariable chain rule is that if you want to know how w changes when you change s, you just think about all the possible paths between the two variables and compute their rate of change going through each path and adding them up gives you the total rate of change. So this is the chain rule that comes from this dependence diagram. So let's try to cal calculate this. So first, what is round w round x? That's like differentiating by x, xzy, xz over y, because that's w, right? And here you're considering these two as a constant. So even if it looks scary, it's a constant multiple, so you can bring it outside and forget about it. You just have to differentiate x by x, which is 1, right? So you end up with z over y times 1. That's nice. And then w, uh, derivative of w with respect to y, this, this one, would be the same thing but this time xz is considered as a constant and you're trying to differentiate 1 over y which can be written as y to the negative 1 power and that one you can use the power rule to differentiate which uh, which means negative 1 comes down and you get you have to subtract 1 again so it's negative 2 which is negative xz over y squared okay how about differentiating w by z? 
Well, that's differentiating by z, xz over y, and in this case, this is considered as a constant, so that's brought outside, and you differentiate z by z, which is 1, so you just get x over y. Then I have to do these round x, round s, so let's compute those. Let's see, round x differentiated by s, that's differentiating this by s, so you're treating e to the t as a constant, so it just gives you e to the t. Round y by round s would be differentiating this by s, so you get 2s, and 2t two, two is considered as constant that goes to 0, that becomes 0 if you differentiate by s. And round z round s would be differentiating 4s by s, so that's 4, and t is considered as constant, so that's it. So now, once we have all of these, then we can put them together uh, using this formula and write down change of w with respect to s as uh, put z over y times e to the t and then plus the next one is negative xz over y squared times 2s this one here plus uh, x over y times 4. Okay, so we're very close to the answer, except uh, I still need to evaluate this at s and t, 1, 0. Okay, so let's copy this. I'll just uh, remove everything, and we have this. Okay, so I have to evaluate this thing I boxed with s being 1 and t being 0, okay? Which means I have to figure out what happens to x, y, and z. So when s is 1 and t is 0, you get uh, x equals to 1 times e to the 0, which is 1. y equals to 1 squared plus 2 times 0 equals to 1. And z equals to 4 times 1 minus 0. And that's equal to 4. Okay? So I found out the values for x, y, and z when s is 1 and t is 0. And uh, that's almost all we need. So round W, round S, when S is 1 and T is 0, it's going to be Z would be 4, Y would be 1, T would be 0, negative X would be 1, Z is 4, Y is 1, and then 2 times s, s would be 1, plus x is 1, y is 1, times 4. So that's going to be 4, negative 8, plus 4. Oh, and it just became 0. But that's just a uh, coincidence, okay? It's not intended. Usually it's something else. But what it means is that uh, at, when s is 1 and t is 0, uh, in terms of s, w doesn't change at all when you change s slightly. Okay? So the rate of change of w with respect to s is 0. That's what it means.